and it shuts down cognitive control, deliberate control over the motor circuitry, and we quit. Mental focus follows visual focus. Now, in blind people, it's slightly different. It follows auditory focus. But in, in most people, your visual focus, as you bring that into really sharp relief, that image of your book, and you stare at it, you're gonna feel some agitation and your mind's gonna be jumping all over the place. But if you wait just a couple minutes, the rest of the world will disappear. I think this is sort of like the flow state people are looking for. But remember, the gate of entry is one of, you have to wade through some, some sewage before you can swim in clear water. Right. That's the way I always think about it. But the visual focus is what brings the rest of the brain into cognitive focus. And people in the martial arts understand this. You've probably experienced this running when you're feeling exhausted and you can just concentrate on one milestone and get there. You can almost bring that into like, you, what you're doing is you're linking that to the dopamine circuitry. You're saying that thing is the milestone, not winning the race, not some other thing outside this, this immediate environment, that thing. And when you're able to start capturing these peripheral circuits, meaning the body, the diaphragm, the visual system, then you start getting past this whole idea of mindsets and it really becomes about the body setting the mind. And this is where I think when you say action leads the rest, mm -hmm. right? It's, that's a, what you're saying is, a, is grounded in real neuro, neurobiological data. So last year there was a paper published that essentially was asking why any human or animal quits at any behavior. Now, certain behaviors like I can't lift a car, unless it's a very small car, I can't lift a car. But if it's, we're talking about running or we're talking about long bouts of work, the question is, well, why do we quit? Like, what is that? And it turns out that every time we exert effort, a certain amount of noradrenaline in the brain is released. And there's a sort of a counter in the brainstem. And at some point, enough noradrenaline is released and it shuts down cognitive control, deliberate control over the motor circuitry, and we quit. That's it. But the thing that can restore those levels or can sort of reset those levels lower and give us more gas, more mileage is dopamine. And it makes perfect sense because our species had to move against very challenging things in, in nature and in, in terms of in culture at every stage of our evolution, including now, 2020 is a good example of this. And when a good example would be if you're really slogging it out and things are miserable, just think like the worst family vacation, everything's a disaster or a very hard physical event and someone cracks a joke, you almost immediately feel a sense of relief. You see this in the team that wins the Super Bowl. Both teams slogged it out. You have to believe they were both at max effort the entire game. Look at the team that wins. They have extra energy. They're jumping all over mm -hmm. the place. So it can't be physical energy. It can't be glycogen related. It's not ketone related. It's nothing in the body in that sense. It's dopamine's ability to take that level of norepinephrine and smack it back down. 